Okay, guys. I have not vlogged in a long time. Sorry, the camera's a little shaky. I'm literally on a treadmill right now. So I'm currently in upstate New York. I have a Sweet 16 to go to today. It's my cousin's Sweet 16. The lighting is terrible. But I came up here early so that I can do her makeup. So that's exciting. But I have to work out because I only worked out once this week and I'm at a hotel right now. They did have a gym and I'm like the only person, the only person in it. So I have full control of the TV, which is awesome. Um, so I'm gonna do a quick workout and then, yeah, I don't know. I just wanted to vlog today. I haven't vlogged in a while, so. And I know I've been like slacking on being consistent on my channel. I have a lot going on, so I feel like I need to say that. So I will get videos up when I can, but until then, you're getting vlogs. All right, I gotta go. Hi guys, it's the next day. I started vlogging when I was up at the oh, um, hotel, yeah. I didn't, I didn't vlog at the Spoozy. Sweet 16 because um, there was a lot going on and I had to go do my cousin's makeup and then it was very loud with the music. Awesome time, I had such a good time. So that's why, you know, excuse my hair. But today, um, we have been waiting to do something and we wanted to film a video with Sean in it because it's all about Sean. We actually DNA tested him, which is really exciting because we, when we were looking for him as a puppy, we knew we wanted a Havanese, but the chances of him being 100% Havanese is very like slim. If you look into the history of the dog, they were Cuban traveling dogs. So the, the Cubans who came over uh, brought these dogs, but there was only about six of them. And so in order to keep their race was it alive- six or 12? Six. Oh, I thought it was more than that. Nope. Uh, when, in order to keep them alive, they had to breed them with other dogs. So there's a lot of different mixes with Havanese. Yeah, so the chances of him being 100% Havanese is like very slim. So we um, got him neutered about three weeks ago. Was yeah. it three weeks ago? Roughly. And at the time of his neutering, they took his blood and then they did his DNA test. Now it was done through Banfield Hospital, which is, I think they work out of PetSmart but they used a company called i don't want to turn the page because the results are on the next page but i'll have to i'll put it like down below like what the name of the company was that they used to do the dna test but the dna test results are in and they gave me a packet like this the last time i went to the vet so i'm so excited okay let's see so it says discover all about sean all right let's see what he is Wow. Okay, so he is 50% Havanese, 25% Maltese, 12.5% Shih Tzu, and 12.5% Cavalier King Char Spaniel. I can definitely see the Spaniel. Wow. Yeah, me too. His coat, his coat is definitely the Spaniel. It's like very curly by his ears and oh the way God, his so nose so looks, it almost, looks like. looks, almost looks like a hound. So I can definitely see the Spaniel. Oh I would have never guessed like Shih Tzu. I would because he, uh, some people have asked me if he was a Shih Tzu. He has a similar color coat and stuff like that. Except the Shih Tzu's face are like more pushed in and his is a little bit more pushed out. And I can also see the Maltese because he's yeah. like, he's almost like Kobe says. Uh -huh. On the next page it hey. says, hey. I don't really know what each page goes into. So it says Havanese literally means dogs from Havana. <laughs> It kind of goes over the personality of that kind of a dog, which is like friendly, good with people, good with children, um, is really good with training. They enjoy like all these sets of things like uh, fly ball and like, like playing around and stuff. So it says their height is about 8 to 11 inches. The weight is 7 to 13 pounds. And... Well, we broke that one. Well, that's like a show dog. Mm. So like the perfect Havanese would be that weight. He's about 14 pounds now. He's only a pound over. Hmm. And see, for a regular pet, he would be 7 to 16 pounds. So he's right in that range. So we knew a lot about Havanese already. But as far as like a Maltese, I feel like they're also almost the same, right? They're very similar. A lot of the same qualities. Yeah, very similar. Then for the Shih Tzus, this is why I think he's going to be a little bit bigger than most dogs like him is because for a shih tzus they can get a little bit bigger in weight so like versus his 7 to 14 pounds they're like 10 to 21 pounds so you know ever since we got him as a puppy he's always grown like 
I'm not even kidding you, like two pounds every two weeks. But he's also like, you know, it has to stop at some point because he's not going to be a puppy size forever. But um, I don't think he's going to get much bigger than this. I don't think so. And that's what they tell me at the groomer anyway. I could be wrong. I have been fooled before. I mean, not the groomer, the vet. All right, so this one I'm interested in because, okay, so this type of dog, the Cavalier King Charles Spaniel, I actually looked into getting this dog when we were looking for him. So they have a lot of the same qualities, playful, calm, um, obedience. What are you doing? They enjoy sports. What are you doing? They're motivated by training and they're like a good family dog. This dog is actually even bigger than the Maltese. I'm, I'm sorry, not the Maltese, the Shih Tzu. Mm. They can get up to 11 to 23 pounds. So please stop going. Don't grow no more. <laughs> Oh my gosh. Okay, so this is cool. So they give us um, his family tree. This is what it looks like. So interesting. Mm. We should DNA test ourselves, but we never do it. I'm down. That'll be the next video. That'll be a more formal video. This is just a vlog. Because <laughs> I'm too tired to do a real video. I'm just like not about it. Because I have to do my hair. We're hungover. And then my makeup. He's hungover. I did not drink. Thank you very much. You're still hungover. Oh, I'm not. Okay, so um, this was something that one of the real reasons why we did it is because it also tracks like certain health risks that he could possibly have. So right now it says we've tested Sean's DNA for more than 150 disease causing mutations. Below is a summary of our findings. For more detailed information of each disease, please log on to your account, blah, blah, blah. Okay, so at risk, zero. Yay! So it says that He's at risk puppy. means he may show or develop signs of one of the following genetic diseases, but he doesn't have anything he's at risk for. He's also a carrier of zero Yay. types of things, so that's awesome. Um, and then it says clear. I don't know what this is. Sean inherited zero copies of the disease mutations. Be sure to use our feature to let your veterinarian know about Sean's results. Oh, I guess like if this was zero, this is zero, he's clear. Yeah, so they tested for 100 there's 152, right? Yeah, they tested for 152 different diseases and he came out. So that's what that looks clear. like. So he's healthy. That's awesome. Yeah. And I, I wish I could say the same for me. It says traits, tail length, genotype, CC. CC. Sean was most likely born with a long tail. True. Although the exact length can vary from dog to dog, long tails are sometimes known as coffee table clearers. <laughs> yeah, but he's not that tall, so I feel like... I, I don't feel like his tail is that long to the point where it's causing it's longer an issue. Than Loki's. Is it really? Mm -hmm. Loki is a friend of ours' um, dog. So actually, I mean, a good friend of ours, He his name is Josh, and um, he has a fiance named Carson. <laughs> They had a Havanese before us, and that's what kind of like inspired us to go get a Havanese because their dog is so freaking cute. All right, so then it says base pigment color. It says he carries the gene for expression of black pigment, which he did when he was younger, remember? Mm -hmm. And then this means that even though the overall coat color may not be black, they're still able to make black pigment around their eyes, nose, and maybe even have black pads on their feet. Yeah, he has black pads. Um, it says ear carriage. A lot of factors can decide the shape, the shape of a dog's ear, but as far as we can tell, Sean probably has the base erect ears. This means that the base of the ear stands up. That's true. And then it flops over, so it's true. It, it kind of like does this and then this. Excuse me, we're trying to show you all. So then it says the coat color subtypes. He carries the gene for white spotting. You're not going over there. Um, he might have uh, a fair amount of like white in his coat, which he does. Mm. Um, and then it says color, the coat color main possibility. So he's known as sable light overall, but with some dark dip patches of fur. Sable is the dominant coat color, meaning that only one copy of the gene is needed in order to show. It's very common in mixed breeds. Yeah, but he's like a... He has a lot of brown in him, though. Yeah, he's stone. Maybe that's Sable. Yeah, Sable's like light overall. Oh. Um, and so his leg length, which was... This was interesting to us because our friend's dog has longer legs, I feel, mm. than him. Like, Sean's a lot lower to the ground. So it says, Sean has two copies of a gene for short limbs. 
known as, oh, here we go, chondrodysplasia. So their legs are very short. Um, when people think of this trait, they mainly think of a dachshund, a corgi, or a basset hound. But there are actually over 20 breeds that have it. That's interesting. See, that's, I thought he was going to be a, like a mixture of a corgi for that reason. Mm. That's interesting. Okay. And then it says... Well, the basset hound makes sense. Because that's almost... Like, they breed... Yeah, but he's not a bad... I would have never took him for a basset hound. No, but they, they're they very close to the king cow. Mm. And then his coat length is probably long and wavy. Did you know that this is because he shows one type of gene for curl? Yep. If they'd shown two, the coat would exhibit tight curls, like a poodle. Mm -hmm. Yeah. He doesn't really have, like, curly hair. It's, like, wavy. Yeah, well, it, right. gets, it gets wavy, yeah, it get, when it gets long. Furnishings? So he carries the gene for furnishings, which means that they are likely to have a fuzzy beard. Yeah. And eyebrows. This trait is commonly associated with terriers, but it's carried by many other breeds as well, including the poodle. Yeah, for sure. Well, you can't tell right now, but in his older photos, um, he definitely has like a very furry beard area. Right now, they cut it down a lot because after his neutering, he was matted very from the cone. So, all right. So it says his ideal weight would be 10 to 17 pounds, which he's in that range right now. Um, he's a pretty healthy weight, they said. I'm not going to read all that. All right. So basically, his ideal weight is 10 to 17 pounds. It talks about how environmental effects can, like, you know, affect his weight. But... It should be good. Like, we watch pretty much what we feed him and, like, what brand it is. We're feeding him Instinct. We mix him what he eats a cup a day, but he eats twice a day, so it's, like, half a cup every time he eats. No, we upped it. Remember, it's a cup and a, and a half. No. Oh, well, a scoop and a half. A scoop and a half. No, when, one cup. I'm sorry. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm so, sorry. and then we mix in, like, a tiny, the tiniest bit of wet dog food, also from Instinct, to um, just kind of, like, to coat the yeah. food. Pure chicken. Oh, okay, so this is actually the name of, I guess, like, the company that did it. It's called Wisdom Panel, and that's it. So it just says, I'm the owner. Are you okay with that? I mean, I signed <laughs> for him, so I guess so. He's your dog anyway. I Don't just, say that. I just love him, but he's your dog. So that is so exciting, and that's it. So this was really cool. Um... There's a bunch of like insurances that you can get, but as far as like puppy insurance, I've really been liking Banfield. Um, I get it's through PetSmart and I pay like, what is it? Like 70, around like 70 bucks a month, but it covers like all of his visits. Um, I can take him as many times as I want and he's not, I'm not going to be charged for it. It covers a lot of like um, the shots that he'll have to get as a puppy and a lot of other things. You guys can call and like do your own research with them if you're interested. But if you do pay what I paid, it covers his neutering and this. So you don't have to pay for it. Well, you get, I think it's like discounted if you do it the way that I did it. But that is so cool, my baby. I really thought he was going to be a corgi. <laughs> you're not a corgi. I love you anyway. All right, guys. We are going because um, I'm hungry. We literally just woke up. And I'm going to have to find the strength to edit this video and put it up. <laughs> but other than that, um, thank you guys um, so much for watching. Please comment, like, and subscribe if you haven't already. And we'll see you in the next video. Bye. Bye, guys.